Hello, Snackers. My name is Kareem Iskander. I'm a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet focused on Cisco DNA Center. My name is Matt Dinapoli, and I am also a developer advocate with the Cisco DevNet program, and I focus on Meraki. Welcome to our first episode of DevNet Snack Minute. If you don't know, DevNet Snack Minutes is your weekly 10 minutes of all things DevNet, where you're going to learn about APIs, coding, or just fun stuff that you, don't, that you need to know. And that one of those fun things that you want to know uh, we're going to learn about today is a project that Kareem has been working on uh, that takes a product called Vault from HashiCorp and integrates it with our Cisco DNA Center. So Kareem, if you wouldn't mind uh, kind of walking us through what your project is and then how it's helpful out in the world there. Yeah, Matt. So the Vault is... Uh basically a tool that for securing your uh, and for securely accessing your secrets and your secrets can be anything it could be um, your credentials for dna center it could be your token for an api key it could be um, your ssh um, token so uh, with with vault you basically what you do is you remove the need of having your credentials as part of your code and you can access this credential when you need when you need it in your application. So we're not putting we're not putting our creds in. Uh, we're not hard coding them in our code. We're not making that mistake. Uh, we're not necessarily putting in a, in a configuration file that's in the clear. That kind of stuff, right? That's exactly right, Matt. And what this allows us is when you're working on you know an automation project or and we we teach this all the time, right? We talk about programmability and automation. Oh, yeah. And we, you know, you need to be able to talk to different domains within your infrastructure. You don't want to have all of the domain information, credentials, or credentials or API tokens stored in your uh, code itself, but rather you want it somewhere. And and HashiCorp has done an amazing job creating this product called Vault. And Vault has uh, different ways of running, right? You can you can go out and grab Vault. Um, as a standalone server that you can set up on your local machine, or you can set it up as a, you know, as part of your your um, your data center as as a standalone uh, app service that you can call and um, fetch your information that you need. And I could run this on uh, another VM in my service and be able to uh, build it into my my application. Exactly, and they have a cloud deployment. It doesn't really matter, right? As long as you can get it up and running, whichever way you like. For for the sake of our conversation, we're we're basically just using a local uh, environment on on your laptop or your your machine itself. Um, and so there are a couple of ways to run it. First of all, um, I'm looking right now at our code exchange, the DevNet code exchange. With DevNet code exchanges, if you don't know what that is, it's a curated uh, repository of all the DevNet projects, um, automation, uh, um, simple applications that would you know, fetch data from a Cisco product using the APIs. It's basically a library for you to go and look at what we've built as developer advocates, as well as what the community has, um, has um, uh, basically added to that uh, repository. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. So um, what we've done is uh, you basically created this step-by-step uh, -step instruction for you to get started with Vault. All you have to do is download and install a flavor of Vault. In this case, um, I've set up a, a binary of Vault on my local machine. And what I've supplied, because Vault has APIs, I've utilized the actual Vault APIs to initialize your instance of Vault and set up your first token. And I've provided you with a Postman collection. All right, so this is kind of like an infrastructure as code type play because now Vault is another service that you can manage, like your database service, um, like your application service, those kinds of things. And we can add that in as another service that's part of our infrastructure deployment or our application deployment. Actually, both, now that I think about it. Spot on. And, and because it has APIs, we can actually deploy that service almost automatically as you're bringing up your infrastructure. Yeah, and we can even make it part of our application configuration. Even though it is a separate service, we can make, because we can hit the, their APIs, we can make it part of their application config. Exactly. So if, if I head over to my Postman um, here, I, you know, I've imported the collection and you have access to that collection as part of the code exchange submission. Um, what I what I walk you through is I initialize Vault with you. Once you initialize Vault, and you do this one in the very first time, right? You got to initialize it, um, and then what that does, it creates an unsealed key for you. 
And you gotta grab that unseal key and go out and before you do anything, you gotta just like a physical vault, you gotta have to a key to get into it. You gotta unseal it, right? In order to open it up so you can go and access the information that that's there. And this is this is where Vault is really cool, Matt. Uh, one of the things that Vault has is being able to create an app role security where you give your application access to your vault. And you based on the app role, you can go create an access, access control list or ACL. And so what that allows us to do is I could create an application and Matt could create an application. I could have certain access to part of the vault where Matt it doesn't need to see those credentials or those API tokens. And it kind of isolates that for you with ACL. And it's great because let's say my application gets compromised. Um, I don't actually have to go in and change the username and password for my instance of DNA Center, for instance, right? Or I don't have to go regenerate a new API token in Meraki, right? I can simply go into that ACL and block that application from accessing my vault. So now I've isolated the problem without having to change anything in my infrastructure. So can we think of, I mean, for those that haven't been, you know, indoctrinated into vault yet, can they think of it like, registering an application with a with a web service um, that uses something like OAuth 2, where they get the client ID, the client secret. Um, but instead of it being that web service, they're kind of registering their application with Vault and getting those kinds of similar uh, credentials for their application for that. That's a perfect description. Just think of it of, of a, as an OAuth flow, um, which is what essentially we do here. So, and I walk you through all of that into, in, in the, you know, I explain as part of the the code exchange submission, I explain what is each step does so you can get an understanding of what we're doing, not just clicking. And it automates the entire process for you. So once we've done that um, and we've defined our application, we've given it a role ID and a secret ID, we can go out and grab the client token. That client token is essentially going to allow us to access the the path where the credential is because we've defined the ACL to that client token. My application now all it has to do is capture that client token, you know, save it somewhere, be, be, read it, bring it in, and then I can start accessing the Vault APIs to basically bring in my Cisco DNA Center credentials, which I've saved. And, and they have a couple of ways of basically saving your secrets. In this case, I'm using what they call key, KV version one, which is key value pair. And basically, so think of it as a JSON, right? And what what's really, really cool about this is as I'm as part of my path, as part of my JSON, not only that I'm saving my username and password, I'm also saving the base URL for my my API token, my API key um, calls to uh, DNA Center. So imagine having a cluster of DNA centers, right? Yeah. I don't actually have to remember the 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 where my cluster is. I don't have to remember the credential for it. I just have to remember the path that I can I get the access to, and I can just basically automate, go out and say for pull in the health of all of my devices across the five clusters of DNA Center, right? I don't have, I can automate that in Python. So it also allows you to do something like that. Do you have code to show us? Yes, I do, Matt. So um, what I've done is, so we've set this up. If I go out to my Python, and this is a simple Python code, um, HashiCorp, gives you, uh, provides you an SDK uh, for you to access Vault via Python, right? So I'm utilizing HVAC, which is their Python SDK. I'm also using, just for a simple example, uh, my data center SDK, my DNAC SDK that I can bring in. I go out, this is what we've generated in Postman, and I'm looking at the code here in PyCharm. I'm using this as my IDE, and this is a Python code. So if I'm looking at that, I'm looking at my unsealed key, which I've captured in my initialization, I my client token, and I've injected all of these as part of my environment variable uh, variables for sa um, safety reasons, right? You don't want to have the stuff saved in there. Um, and then I'm just basically going and saying, these are my mount points, and this is my path. This is all I need to remember from, from a developer perspective, that this is the path that's going to provide me with the credential to, as, to DNA Center. And I'm going out, and I'm saying, retrieve basically read the secret in using the, their, the HVAC SDK to read the secret in. And this will bring in the username and password for my uh, DNA center. 
and then I'm going out and saying, okay, now that I have this information, go out and just fetch a list of devices. You can do anything you want from this on. So basically authenticate against the DNAC API, bring in a token. Once you have the token, I can go out and get a list of devices and just print them to the screen. And this is essentially what we're doing. If I go out and run this, basically going out, I pull the list of devices. And imagine now if I want to iterate through different clusters, I can basically just go say, you know, write a for loop that says go out to the next in path, bring in the next credentials and give me the list of um, all the devices. Or yeah, I can see, uh, I mean, all kinds of applicability in Cisco platforms for, you know, just because that's what we're concerned with. And I mean, there's definitely a lot of usage we could get out of this for Meraki uh, examples. And, you know, I even WebEx teams, you know, their their API and the developer key that we provide people can be a challenge. And yeah. so, you know, they can put that in the vault, right? Even if you're building your application, Matt, right, with, with WebEx teams, you can actually have a Teams token, author authorization token saved as part of your vault and bring your DNA center and your token and output alerts to WebEx Teams, for instance. So, you know, you can bring all of those in if you have access to. So everything right. that I talked to you about here, Matt, and everything that I've shown you from code, from the way to get started with uh, with Vault and how to get the, Python, the, the Postman collection, all of that is available on um, DevNet's code exchange. You can go out, look for it, and you have access to everything that you can just bring in and start working with. Well, that sounds great. I'm going to actually go grab that later tonight and, and work on a, a new project with it. So, all right, snackers, uh, we hope you enjoyed that yummy snack. And we'll see you next time where we're going to talk about the uh, new version of the Meraki APIs. So, Kareem, I can't wait to chat with you about that. I have some interesting things to tell you. I can't wait, Matt. Thank you.